Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Mini Cooper, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver. So these Mini Coopers are really fun cars. You know, you can zip around in them and really enjoy yourself when you're driving them. And, you know, generally speaking, um, a lot of times you'll see these out on nice days, you know, especially convertible. You wanna get out there, enjoy your vehicle and everything else. But on the same note, you got those nice days, you want to get active you want to go do something and um you know with the mini being so small you know it says it right in the name you can't really fit anything extra on the inside so if you're someone that might want to you know take your car out on that nice day but bring a bike with you that way you can drive up to the trails uh you know spend some time out riding and then cruise back in the mini uh, a hitch is going to allow you to do that you know this is going to allow you to use those different types of accessories to get that done. If it were me and I was looking for a hitch for my Mini, um, I think my biggest concern would be how it's gonna look. You know, just um, I would kind of assume you're probably not planning on doing anything heavy duty with it, pulling a trailer or anything like that. Um, so that really wouldn't matter to me all that much, um, but I would want something to look good. You know, I don't want to take away from the looks of my Mini Cooper. And I think this one looks awesome, actually. Uh, about as best as it can on a vehicle like this. You know, it, it sits up nice and tight against the bottom of our bumper. Um, so not only does it help with looks, but ground clearance too, which is important. You know, these things ride pretty low to the ground. And really the only thing you're gonna be able to see is uh, just the receiver here. So it really does do a good job of blending in. And, um, you know, not really taken away from the sporty looks that the Mini Cooper has. It does seem like a lot of people uh, primarily use their hitch for bike racks. Um, definitely understandable. And this one should work out real well. A lot of those bike racks can actually be folded up onto a stored position. And so you want to make sure you have enough room to do that. And the hitch gives that to us. The end of the receiver tube is going to be kind of just a little bit past our bumper by just a hair, but more or less pretty flush with it. So whenever you do want to fold those accessories in that upright storage position, uh, you shouldn't really have to worry too much about them contacting the back of your vehicle. This is going to be a class one hitch. So it's gonna have that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening and a reinforced collar here at the end for some extra strength. It is going to have the standard half inch size pinhole Pen and clip does not come included, but you can grab one here at eTrailer. And that pinhole, where it kind of sits, is tucked in there a little bit, so um, not super easy just to push that pin through, but not really a huge deal either. Safety chain openings are going to be a plate style, and they're going to be large enough to use just about any size hook that you might have. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's going to have a 150 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. All right, and that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one and two bike racks, just to give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be a thousand pounds. That's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that will be the total weight of whatever you are pulling behind your mini. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 10 and a half inches. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about two inches. You can use that measurement to figure out exactly uh, that if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. At the end of the day, a hitch you really can't go wrong with, you know. Um, it's going to get the job done. It's made from recycled materials as well, so you can never go wrong there. And uh, honestly, I, I really like the, the finish of it. It's kind of a hammer tone finish and uh, just looks really good on the back of the Mini. So, um, you know, you can put your accessories in here and, and go have some fun. Now, as far as the installation goes, I'm not gonna lie, um, it's a little tricky. Um, nothing too complicated about it. It just takes up a little time, but as long as you stay focused, shouldn't really give you too many issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put the hitch on together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here underneath the back of our Mini Cooper and along this bottom edge of our fascia, we're going to have a total of eight 8mm eight head screws that we need to 
removed. So go ahead, grab our socket and get all these pulled out. Now if you look inside of our wheel well, we're gonna have another uh, single eight millimeter head screw. And what we're gonna do with these, we're going to loosen it up quite a bit, but not completely remove it. So we'll back that out a little ways. And from this point on, anything we do to one side of our vehicle, we're also gonna repeat on the other side because it'll be set up the exact same way. Now we need to do is remove our tail light. So it's gonna involve a couple of steps. The first one being this chrome uh, trim ring. We're gonna have to remove that. What you're gonna do is take a plastic uh, trim tool and we just need to carefully kind of work behind that trim ring. So there's some, there's some clips in there. I'm not gonna be able to see them until we actually get it off but that's what we're trying to release and just be very careful with this. You know, this is kind of brittle plastic. So take your time, kind of work your way down and, and around the whole trim ring. And once you kind of get the first, you know, little bit of it to, to free up, it makes it a lot easier. You know, all the other clips just kind of want to come off. So we'll just carefully work our way around here until we get the ring off. Put this off, we'll just set it off to the side for now. With that trim ring out of the way, that's going to expose three uh, screws that we need to pull out. These are gonna be Torx bit heads, and I'm gonna use a T20 to get those removed. To get the tail light out, we're just gonna grab it and kind of maneuver it towards the back of the vehicle. Once you get it started, you may have to kind of lift up on your, your hatch here, give you the room that you need. But once we have it out, we can get it disconnected. So with this here, just gonna have a tab there in the center. You can push down on that and pull it apart. Now we can set our light off to the side for now. Down here in the corner, uh, we're going to have a Torx bit fastener. We're going to pull that out. This one will be a T25. Go ahead and get that removed. And then once you have that done, we can work on our wheel well trim here. It says piece of plastic. We need to uh, remove that up until about this point, somewhere in there. And with this, you can just take your hand and start to work it off. Before you get too far, there's gonna be a, a light connector there. Disconnect it. Just like the other one, push down on the center of the connector and remove it. And once we get to about this point, we can stop there. There's gonna be another Torx bit fastener uh, right there that was located underneath of our wheel well trim. So take that same T25 and get this removed. Now if you move underneath our vehicle, if you kind of pull out on your bumper trim, this is more towards the passenger side you're gonna see this piece of plastic comes out with a bolt on it. You need to pull that bolt out. We'll use an eight millimeter socket to do that.
Now we can start to actually get our fascia pulled off. What I've done is just use some painter's tape around the edges where we're gonna be working. That way we don't you know, accidentally scratch up or paint or anything. What you're gonna do is starting at the corner, just gonna pull out on it. And we want these fasteners to release here. What you can do is just kind of take a trim tool and get underneath there, pop those out. Once you get to about this point, um, what you can do is just kind of tape your fascia in place if you don't have an extra set of hands. Get to this point on the other side and then we're going to come back to the center and uh, actually get the fascia removed. So once you have both sides loose, you can grab your fascia and start to pull it back. And it looks like we may have some electrical connectors that we need to disconnect. It's like several of them like this. And what you're going to do with these is pull back on that gray portion and you can push down on it and get them removed. We'll have our light connector as well. Same, same deal, push down on the center. Once we get this last one off, you can take our fascia and set it off to the side somewhere safe. Now we can remove our impact bar here. So on each side of the vehicle, we're gonna have two uh, 17 millimeter nuts that you need to pull off. And I already have the other side uh, removed, so you can just pull straight back on this and put it off to the side. In the center of our vehicle, we're gonna have this plastic uh, vent cover and we need to remove and uh, discard this because um, it'll be interfering with our hitch. So to get this off on each side of it, we're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut. Get this one off, as well as this one. kind of pry down on it, kind of interfering with some of this other plastic, but slide it off and get it out of the way. Now we need to do some trimming and we're gonna be uh, removing a portion here, that way uh, our hitch can uh, go where it needs to. We are gonna have some wiring here that'll be in the way, so we'll just take a trim tool and kind of free that and just tuck it up and out of the way for now. And there's a diagram and the instructions that tells you where to cut. Um, I marked that out, so I'm gonna remove this material and uh, we'll do this to each side of our vehicle. So I kind of held her hitch in place and it was still interfering with this piece of plastic. And um, as opposed to trying to trim more of it out, you know, where we need to trim is where it's gonna need to be or gets mounted anyway. So I figured it'd probably just be easier just to remove it. So I'll pull the nut off using a 10 millimeter. Now we need to trim out an opening here on our heat shield. That way our hitch won't interfere with it. So I went ahead and marked that out. And with this, I'm just gonna use a pair of 10 snips to uh, remove this material. Now we can grab our hitch and this is going to fit over the bumper studs there like so, get that in place. And then the bumper beam is going to sandwich uh, 
the hitch, so this will go back into position as well. Right over it. And then we're just gonna take the factory hardware that was originally holding the bumper beam on. And we're gonna get all those going hand tight. Once all the hardware is in place and hand tight, come back with our socket and snug them all down. Once everything's tight, you need to make sure and come back with the torque wrench and tighten down all the bolts to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer or a lot of times you can rent them from your local auto parts store. Now we can trim out our fascia. So we got to make a small opening here to clear our hitch. Uh, there's some measurements in the instructions. I went ahead and drew those out. And I'm going to use this uh, tool here to cut everything. Pretty thin plastic. Probably use a, a rotary tool or utility knife, uh, whatever you have laying around. With that said, go ahead and get this cut out. Once you have the area trimmed out, uh, they actually give you a rubber uh, sleeve that you can push around and push on your fascia uh, just to help really kind of clean things up. I find this to be easier to do when the fascia is still off the car as opposed to trying to put it on and work this around the hitch and everything else. So uh, this simply just pushes on and this is how it turned out. Now we can reinstall our fascia. Don't forget to plug all of your electrical components back in. And we're just simply going to work this into place and re-secure everything the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Eco Hitch trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Mini Cooper.